Water pouring into a church is dealing the place a second punch in the gut. It's an off-Broadway theater company which has already been closed because of the pandemic. Despite this new setback, the staff is adamant the show must go on. CBS 2's Christina Fan reports from the Upper East Side. Ten months after the pandemic closed the York Theater Company, this is the devastating sight crew members return to see. General Manager Aaron Sims overcome by feelings of despair when he unlocked the doors the first time since last March. It was a mixture of water and mud, which made it absolutely terrible. Uh, I mean, it looked like a swamp uh, because of the water and mud, uh, and it was caked on all the carpets. City officials say a water main break on Lexington Avenue last week caused the flood. The water first entered the sanctuary of St. Peter's Church, then poured into the basement of the building where the theater is housed. We spent several days last week peeling wet script pages apart, trying to save them, because some of them are uh, things that we have rediscovered or brought back to life and are not readily available. It's a race against time now to rescue the theater's 50-year history before mold sets in. Workers have been frantically disassembling wires and lights, packing up props and costumes for storage so a remediation team can begin work. The floors will have to be redone. The stage will have to be rebuilt. Despite all the hardships, the York Theatre Company is determined to reopen. Whenever and wherever that may be, the company is hoping to rely on the generosity of the local community. We have no intention of going out of business. If they can, give us a hand, you know, because if ever there was a time that we need live performance, live arts, and that notion of being together, it's now. For now, the York is supporting itself by putting on a series of virtual shows and starting an online donation campaign, preparing for the day the curtain will rise again. On the Upper East Side, Christina Fan, CBS 2 News. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our little extravaganza. We could not be more excited to have you here. And who are we? We are the York Theatre Company. And two years ago, we began the celebration of our 50th anniversary. My name's Jim Morgan. I'm the producing artistic director, and I've been a part of the whole thing for 47 of these 52 years. Of course, over the past year, we've all experienced various challenges to do with the pandemic. In January, however, we got our own very special challenge when we found that our longtime space at 54th and Lexington had been severely damaged in a flood from a broken water main on Lexington Avenue. We have since moved everything out into storage while we figure out what our next steps are. Somewhere in there, our friends Tom Dangora, Michael Dangora, and Tim Guinea stepped forward and volunteered to create an event for us. Not just a benefit for us to help us get through this mess, but as a thank you to the people who have so generously donated to our flood fund over the last several months. And that's the event you're here for tonight. From the beginning, they wanted to base it on a show that we had a great deal of success with almost 20 years ago. We helped create and develop the musical of musicals, The Musical by Eric Rockwell and Joanne Bogart. It's written for a cast of four, and their idea was to do it with a much, much larger cast. And they've done that, and this cast is wildly talented. We can't wait to share it with you. But it also allows us to see the show brought to life in an entirely new way, and that's so much a part of what we do here at the York. Our slogan is, Where Musicals Come to Life. And we do a lot of work with new writers and new shows, but we also work with shows from the past that deserve to be seen again. And it's this mix of new and old that makes us unique. We are where musicals come to life. When all this is over, we look forward to having you in our theater, in person, when it is safe to do it. In the meantime, we are so excited to share this show with you tonight. Keep in mind it streams through Thursday the 22nd, this coming Thursday. So you have four days to watch it again. You can tell friends about it who may not have known anything about it or people who just couldn't make it tonight. They have four days to watch it through the 22nd. Please help spread the word. And now enjoy the musical of musicals, the musical, and more. Okay, kids. Five, six, seven, eight. Here we go. 
we go. A musical, start the show. A musical, something about it is so inviting. Song and dance, a musical, jokes, romance. A musical, opening numbers are so exciting. Curtains go up, footlights glow. Put them together, you've got a show. So hold on tight, a musical here tonight. A musical, let's get on with the show. Welcome to the musical of musicals, the musical. My name is Jerry McIntyre. I'm the Associate Artistic Director of the York, where musicals come to life. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what is the musical of musicals, the musical? The show takes the classic melodrama. I can't pay the rent. You must pay the rent. Oh, then I'll pay the rent. And gives it the musical theater treatment. We tell the story five times. First, in the style of Rodgers and Hammerstein. Next, in the style of Stephen Sondheim. The style of Jerry Herman, in the style of Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. And finally, in the style of Candor and Ebb. High heels and pumps, a shoes ago. Down in the dumps, a blues ago. Washing your hair, shampoos ago. Chill in the air, a choose ago. Shows about cows, a moose ago. Shows with me owls. Cats, too much perfume. P musical, working the room. A schmoozical. Here we go. A musical, start the show. A musical, something about it is so inviting. Song and dance, a musical, jokes, romance, a musical. Opening numbers are so exciting. Songs that confuse. Confusical. Songs that amuse. A musical. Playing a game that you just can't lose. Pika musical. Lots of fun. A musical. Not one more pun. Maybe one or two ago. Let's get on with the. Let's get on with the. Let's get on with the. Welcome, I am Michael Dangora. I am Tom Dangora. And we are so excited to have you here tonight. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we have a crazy show for you. Crazy! This whole year has just been nuts for theater. Nuts for theater. And we thought, how can we put on the biggest musical comedy ever? Ever! And we realized we could do it through the magic of green screen! We had actors literally all over the country. We had actors in LA. Hey, Ethan Slater. We had actors uh, being quarantined uh, in hotel rooms. Hey, Telly, what's up? We had actors, well, we had actors with blue screens. Oh, hey, Leslie. Hey, Jose. Uh, we had actors just in their living rooms. Oh, Charles Bush, what's up? How's it going, Alexandra Billings? And so we brought them all together through the magic of Green Screen! Ah. Uh, the actors in New York, we actually filmed them at the West Bank Cafe in the Lori Beachman Theater. Thank you, Steve and Janet, for letting us do that. Please, if you're in New York, go to West Bank. It's literally the best restaurant on the planet. And get... Tom's Pork Shop. It's okay. literally named after... Me, Tom. Okay, back to this event and the magic of Green Screen. So tonight's gonna be campy, it's gonna be ridiculous, it's gonna be wild. And you should understand, not one actor was with each other for this show. Nobody filmed together. And you might not even notice that. You want to know why? The magic, magic of, of green screen! Ooh. And through the magic of green screen. Oh. Tonight, for the first time after doing three fundraisers together, we can finally welcome you with our amazing producing partner, Tim Gibby! Hi, Tim. Oh my god, you're so big. Oh. I guess that's the magic of green screen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and supporting the York Theatre. It's really great that you're here. 
please uh, donate if you're able to and help New York get it back on its feet and help New York be the incredible, vibrant artistic community that we yes. all love. And all you need to do, if you haven't donated yet, even, you know, a dollar, five dollars, anything you can give, we appreciate it. Uh, all you have to do, if you have a, a phone on your camera... I'm sorry, what? A phone on your camera, you can actually just scan the QR code right here on your screen and it'll take you right to the donation page. That's For the, the magic, magic of green screen. Do you magic. think we talked about the magic of green screen tonight? Thank enjoy you. the show and enjoy the magic of green screen. Corn, in the style of Rogers and Hammerstein. The lights come up on a farm. Beyond it, fields of golden corn stretch out to the horizon. It is Kansas in August. The earth spins around like a carousel. On bright clouds of music we fly. The cat playing in a dreamy ballet. It's as normal as blueberry pie. Oh, what beautiful corn. What beautiful, beautiful corn. The earth whispers secrets. The field is all ears. Oh, what beautiful corn. Morning, Big Willie. Well, morning, Miss Abby. Farming the land is the life for me. It calls me and I can't say no. But I'd gladly forsake any shovel or rake. I'm in love with the wonderful hall. Oh, what beautiful corn. What beautiful, beautiful corn. I said it before and I'll say it again. Oh, what beautiful corn. All the critters are having a field day that donkeys he hung with glee. A gaggle of geese are giggling. Well, hush up, you hyena, stop laughing at me. Oh, the chipmunk is reading the Bible. Well, now there's a remarkable fall. Yes, he learned the same way a lark learned to pray. He's got to be carefully taught. Oh, a beautiful corn. What beautiful, beautiful corn. What's that in my tooth? It's a kernel of truth. Shucks, what beautiful corn. What beautiful, 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 beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Corn! Morning, Big Willie. Come to call on June. Oh, heck no, Miss Abby. What use have I got for her? Look, I got all my life figured out. <laughs> Traveling with the carnival, seeing the world, etc., etc., etc. Sounds like you're high as an elephant's eye. You youngins don't fool me none. Never seen two dang fools more in love. June, look who's here. Morning, June. What are you doing here? Well, I was just wandering around your cornfield. Oh, what's the use of wandering? You spent so much time in the cornfield. Folks are starting to talk. There's nothing but husks and kernels and cobs and all the rest is stock. Well, I couldn't care less what folks will say. And I couldn't care less about you. I couldn't care less about you. I couldn't care less about you. And to show you how little I do, I wash my socks and comb my hair and rinse out my long I shave my legs and pierce my ears and buy some fancy new brassiers. I pluck my brows and my nose hairs too. I couldn't care 
stress about you Well say, you trying to get me to marry you Well I won't See I don't love you Though people say that I do I hope that you don't love me too If I did, which I don't, I would tell you so But I don't, so I won't Okay, now you know I don't love you The landlord enters. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Big Willie, this is... Well, folks around these parts call me Jitter. You come to collect the rent, I suppose. That's right, Miss High and Mighty. And if I don't collect by five o'clock today, I'm going to marry you myself. Hey, leave the little lady alone. What's it to you? Mr. High and Mighty. Well, you can't just up and marry her just because you can't pay her rent. Oh, yeah? Oh, who says I can't? It says I can right here in this lease. Well, that lease will never hold up in court. Yes, it will. And don't call me Liesel. So, either I see the rent or I see you at the wedding. And now, I'm going back to my dark and lonely room to look at pictures. Pictures of dirty girls. That jitter is up to no good, but I guess I have to marry him because you don't love me and I don't love you. Look, okay, okay, okay. Don't throw okays at me. Well, if that's the way you want it, so long. Farewell. Avita Zen. Goodbye. I, I don't Mother Abby, I'm so confused. Should I follow my heart and marry Big Willie? Or follow my head and marry Jitter? There's a rainbow or the mountain, and that rainbow is your dream. You'll find it when you faced the storm and forded every stream. Silver locks will serenade you on that island of your dream. That island with the mountain and the rainbow and the stream. Your dream. Don't ask me why. Trudge through the rain Though your hair's all blown And you look insane And your eye makeup's running And your nose is red The hills are alive But you're half dead
Thank you, Mother Abby. That was so helpful. Hmm. Follow my dream. 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 As June drifts off to sleep, in her own little corner, in her own little chair, Dream June appears. Dream Will enters. Together they dance a highly symbolic ballet, sort of run of de mill. Dream Mother Abby crosses, bringing corn to all. June marches down the aisle, carrying a bouquet of corn. Dream Jitter marries Dream June. Dream Jitter tears up the lease. June awakens to find Jitter standing in front of her. Time's up! Miss High and Mighty, you got the rent? But Jitter, you tore up the lease, remember? No, that wasn't me. That was Dream Jitter. Now, if you ain't got the rent, then you're coming with me to get married. Why me, Jitter? Because you're June. June, June, June. Just because you're June. June, June. Oh, put me down. Okay. You're nothing but a no good, low down, flibberty gibber. No, put me down. Oh, all right, Miss <gasps> Hanati. Oh. Now, where in tarnation is that parson? Hey, that's my girl. I'll just go and get her, or get a puzzlement. If I get her, I'll have to stay. If not, I'll be on my way. Should I stay or should I go? Is it yes or is it no? To be or not to be? It's time for my Soliloquy. She can't tie me down. I've got to see the world. If I go, I'll be free to ramble, to drink and cuss and gamble, showing how manly I am. Got more girls than the king of Siam. Still, if I stay, I can have lots of corn. Corn on night till morn. Say, maybe that's too much corn. Besides, it's hard work to live on a farm. There's chores like milking old Bessie, a kicking and a squirting around the place. I'd sure be getting all messy with a pound and a half of cream upon my face. Maybe it's time I settle down. June sure is pretty. We could have a son. I'll name him after me. I'll teach him to wrestle and play. Some fellers might call it silly for a big guy like me to stay home all day. Playing with my own little willy. Well, so what? I gotta decide. I can't stay torn. I'll pop the question if she'll pop the corn. I swear by an elephant's eye. I'll say I do or die. Or should I?
lights back up on the farm, celebrating the wedding of Jitter and June. The townsfolk are celebrating. That was delicious clam dip. Eating it made us glad. We know they were minced, but we're convinced that some of them clams were bad. Our stomachs hurt, our bladders are full, we drank too much champagne. That was delicious clam dip, but some of us got tome. Remember when we opened up the corn chip bag and poured them all into the bowl? Then we gobbled and gulped and crunched and munched. Guess we just lost control. Gobble and gulp and crunch and munch and losing our self-control. I like to say a word for guacamole. Wait! Stop the wind. Oh, Big Willie, I knew you'd come. But it's too late. Jitter and me are already married. That's right, Mr. High and Mighty. She's mine. And it says so right here on this marriage certificate. We're legally wed as of five o'clock today. I g g guess this is goodbye, Big Willie. I g guess so. I don't Wait, let me see that certificate. <laughs> ha! Why, this scrap of paper don't mean nothing. Haven't y'all heard Kansas has adopted daylight savings time? Daylight savings, daylight savings time? time? Did you hear Did that? You daylight, daylight savings, savings time? time? Well, that means it's only 10 after 4. So we ain't married yet. But you still gotta pay the rent. I'll pay the rent. And well before 5 o'clock. Daylight savings time save the day. Daylight savings time save the day. There's an extra hour so he can marry May. June! We can turn our clocks back and throw them all away. He'll be making whoopee. We'll, we'll all be making hay. Daylight savings, 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 daylight savings falls on his own knife. Oh, Jitter tripped and fell on his own knife. He's dead. So, Big Willie, what were you asking me before? What do you say? Will you marry me, June? June, June, June. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, what beautiful corn. What beautiful, 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 beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. June, you're busting out all over. I guess I've gone about as far as I can go. What I'm Zero Time Academy Award nominee Jane Krakowski, which also happens to be the name of a very young actress who in 1981 got her very first off-Broadway job playing Frederica in the York Theatre Company's production of Stephen Sondheim's A Little Night Music. I obviously wasn't born yet in 1981, and I have no idea what happened to that Jane Krakowski. But I'm confident that the experience of being in that show, getting to work with Mr. Sondheim and a remarkable company of actors, was nothing short of life-changing. And if she were here talking to you today, she would tell you what a gift this place is to the city of New York. And she would urge you to consider donating, if you can, to that GoFundMe link on your screen. As you already know, this has been an incredibly challenging time for theater companies everywhere, even without having to face the consequences of a devastating flood. 
I, for one, don't want to imagine this city without the York. Let's do everything we can to make sure that this incredible theater company can continue launching careers and thrilling audiences for years to come. This Jane Krakowski and that Jane Krakowski, thank you. Love you, York Theater. The York Theater was launched on January 22nd, 1969, two days after Richard Nixon was inaugurated president. Janet Hayes Walker, an elegant singing actress, led a team of three to form the new theater company. Her fellow founders were actor John Newton and director Stuart Howard. Janet located the first home for the new theater in the historic Episcopal Church of the Heavenly Rest, where her husband was organist and choir master. In its early years, the York produced a wide variety of classical and modern plays, but no musicals. In 1974, Janet met Jim Morgan. She asked him to design a poster for the upcoming production of Moliere's School for Wives at the York Theater. So pleased was she with this poster that she asked him to design the sets for the next production at the York Theater. Soon, Jim was creating innovative stage designs for many York productions on a frugal budget. And since performances were in the church gym, shared with a private school, sets and seats had to be removed after each performance to make way for the next day's basketball practice. Jim and Janet shared a passion for musicals, especially lesser known works ready for rediscovery. Two years after Jim's arrival, the York presented its first musical theater production. In the seasons that followed, musical revivals became integral to the theater's identity. Daily News Review, Rex Reed proclaimed that the York Theater produced theatrical miracles on a limited budget with an abundance of talent. Reed was writing about a revival of Anyone Can Whistle, but his comment could have applied to any number of York productions then and now. In 1992, the York moved to the Intimate Theater at Citicorp Center, situated in a real theater and paying real rent for the first time. In 1994, Janet and Jim unveiled the Musicals in Mufti series, which brings back lost treasures of the musical theater world in simply designed productions. Mufti can be translated as out of uniform or in street clothes. At the York, it means without the trappings of a full production. When Janet died in 1997, the York Theater Board followed her wishes and made Jim artistic director. Soon after that, at his suggestion, the company revised its mission, devoting all its passion and energy to producing musical theater. For nearly a quarter of a century, all of the York's main stage productions have been musicals. Every season, the Mufti series rediscovers gems from our musical theater heritage. In the New York Developmental Reading Series, writers experience their works in progress in front of knowledgeable audiences. And the musical theater training program nurtures youthful artists for the future. In just over half a century, the York Theater Company has become the place where musicals come to life not merely for New York, but for theater lovers around the world. Hi, this is Ben Vereen. We got magic to do just for you. And you're here tonight for Music of Musicals. Oh, what a night this is gonna be. Thank you for being there for the York Theater. The York Theater, who, who loves for us to use their tagline, the York Theater, where musicals come to life. <laughs> And tonight, we're keeping the York Theater alive. Why? Because the York Theater has always been there for us, and the York Theater is part of our DNA. So thank you for being here tonight, and enjoy yourself, because we got magic to do. Donate! Tagline below. <laughs> Have a wonderful time. A little complex in the style of Stephen Sondheim. The lights come up on a New York City apartment complex, aptly called The Woods. The company of actors set the scene. Irony. Ambiguity. 
dissonance. Angst. Welcome to our complex, our apartment complex. Welcome to the woods. All of our tenants are very neurotic. Emotional lives are completely chaotic. The songs in their heart aren't ever melodic. Everyone here is a little bit lost in the woods. Welcome, Welcome to, to the woods. The sentiments heard here are seldom endearing. It's kind of slow going, but worth persevering. It may not sink in till the third or fourth hearing. Then if you're bright, there's a glimmer of light. In the woods. Welcome to the woods. Don't feel the truth. Yes, it's a truth. Everyone here has at least one smooth. Unlikable people with lives that are hollow. It's all food for thought. But a bit hard to swallow So don't feel too bad If you don't really follow You're not alone But, but then no one's alone In the woods Welcome to the woods Apartment 60, Abby She's bitter and boozy A bit of a floozy She's blousy and frowsy And not very choosy Apartment 75, Billy. He wants to write songs, but his prospects are dismal. His thoughts are so deep that, in fact, they're abysmal. Apartment 73, June. Finance is restricted, emotions conflicted. She wanders in one is when she'll be evicted. By the landlord, there's always a landlord. But who is the landlord? Jitter, jitter, jitter. <laughs> Let us consider the story of Jitter. Some have mistaken his heart for litter. He left it out in the hole one day, and when he returned, they had thrown it away. They thought his art was a piece of junk. They threw it out in the hunker plunk. And when he found out, he got drunk as a skunk. Cheater, the landlord, slash artist, slash demon. He sits in his apartment, wondering where his art went. Madder than a hatter and about to split heads Living in a building that is full of shitheads Fools! They've destroyed my masterpiece They must die! I swear by the gods of murder and art I'll take my revenge on those who took part I'll make them pay in a crafty way I'll kill them and coat them with paper mache I know they say I'm no Monet. Que sera, que sera. Oh, what the hey? <laughs> the doorbell. Go away! Hi, I'm June. I hate to disturb you while you're busy brooding, but I need to speak to you. Oh. What a lovely color scheme. Red, 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 blue, 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 blue. Picks up the orange, picks up the orange. What do you want? I know I'm behind in my rent, but I'll pay as soon as I can. Perhaps there's another solution. In lieu of paying your rent, why don't you pose for me? Why, Jitter, show a little decorum. A funny thing happened on the way to decorum. Will you pose for me? 
I don't know. I want to. No, I don't. I thought I did. And now I'm not so sure. Sometimes I think I'm having a thought. But then I realize I'm not. You see, I have birds. Birds? I have little birds flying round my head. Why do the birds fly around my golden hair? Are they making nests up there with twigs and sprigs and bits of twine? Who oh, clean the messes they leave in my dresses? Your dresses as good as mine. so I can sneak up behind you, slit your throat, and cover your corpse in papier mache. Dieter, he's crazy, he's crazy. What would be the matter with the murder of a model? If the model were a moron in the middle of a model, and the murderer, a manic and admittedly demented, and the lady he repented with a try to circumvent it even after he assented that he meant it. The art of retribution depends on execution. I'll mesmerize her with my solemn gaze and improvise a little polonaise, committing a crime in three-quarter time. Revenge is so much sweeter when you murder to a meter. Ah, getting away with murder. <laughs> but tell me, how shall I do her in? Bake her into a pie, perhaps. I need an epiphany. Shall I use a knife? No, not on your life. To slash in a passion is so out of fashion. Shall I use a gun? Fun but overdone. To shoot doesn't suit her. The suitor's a suitor. No, here I swear my solemn pledge, my art must always be cutting edge. Would it be too grim to tear her limb from limb, alarming yet charming and truly disarming? Shall I use a rope, shoot her up with dope? Hemlock is easy, but too socrates -y. Hats off to decapitation. Yes, here I swear my solemn pledge. My art must always be cutting Door chimes, in comes company. Hi, 
Bill, Billy, Billy, baby, Billy, Bobby, Willy, Silly, Willy, Willy, Nilly, Wooly, Bully, Willy, Willy, Winky, Willy, Wonka. Eight! Now, what do you want? Billy, baby. I came to check up on June. It sounds like you were making some pretty specific overtures. June, I've written another song and I'm dedicating it to you, babe. You're like a melody, a memorable melody, a tuneful melody, a humble melody. Stop. You're never going to win her back with that sentimental tripe. She's mine. But Jitter, Billy might find me a place where I can pay the rent. Careful. Finders can be weepers. Losers can be keepers. Roses can be red. Violets can be blue. Some lyrics rhyme. Some don't. Are you with me? Stay with me. And what does that all mean? I'm weary being wary. Be wary of the weary. Don't worry if it's scary. The scary isn't eerie. Be leery of the wary. Are you with me? Stay with me. June, wake up. Let's get out of here. He's crazy. Crazy? I am not a moon, truly. No one is alone. Stay with me. Well, June, who are you going to stay with? Well, I don't know. Billy and I are engaged. You're marrying that hack. Out! Out, I say! Jitter's still crazy. He's crazy! Listen, babe, you better decide. It's either Jitter or me. Later that day, June knocks on her neighbor's door. Abby, I need your advice. Yeah? What? Tell me what to do because I don't know what to do. I really think I'm going crazy like that woman in the show. I mean, I don't have all those children and I'm only 32 yet. I'm engaged to marry Bill, but now I'm fond of dinner too, although I think he wants to kill me because I haven't paid my rent yet. And I throw his prices are in the dumpster with the other garbage. I have birds and I'm not very lucid. I have birds. I'd like to propose a test. Let's see what would happen if you shut up. So you're confused. Big deal. So what? Who's not? Go take a class in pottery, win the lottery, have another drink and toast to camaraderie. You're bringing a tear to my eye. Don't you get it, sweetie pie? We're all gonna die. You don't believe me? Just watch the clock. It's all a crock, you're perplexed. News flash, who cares? Save your prayers next time you pass a casket by. Stop and ask, do I really have to die? You can kiss your ass goodbye. Why even bother to try? Life sucks, you wanna know why? We're all gonna die! Die! Thank you, Abby. That was so helpful. Hi, girls. 
I just sold that Hummable Melody song. I'll pay the rent. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Billy. Let's all go tell Jitter we're sorry. Uh, grateful. Warily, they stroll along to Jitter's apartment. My hour of revenge has come. They all must die so my art can live. But how much longer can I wait? The end is dear, I will persevere. God, make me patient. <laughs> Don't bother, there he is. That's, That's when he murdered the three oldest tenants. Jim and Jim are always doing his penance. He turned them all into objets d'art, all right, so the pluck a little bizarre. This gory story of art and crime is more ridiculous than sublime. But luckily, this is the very last rhyme. Till next time. Hey, I'm Sarah Borellis, and we hope you're enjoying the show tonight celebrating the York Theater. The York is so important to the NYC theater landscape because it is the only theater company devoted to nurturing new musicals. Because of your donations tonight, the York will be able to rebuild and nurture new talent and up and coming composers and get this part of our theater landscape back on its feet. So thank you for watching, thank you for donating. If you haven't yet, please consider doing so. And on with the show. I'm so glad I'm together with you watching this extraordinary cast celebrate the York Theater. There's a reason so many amazing people are coming together. For over 50 years, the York has been the home of musical theater in the Big Apple. As we come back from the pandemic, let's make sure the New York theater scene is waiting for us, as vibrant as ever. Together, we can do this. Together, we save the West Bank and Birdland. Now let's get the York on solid footing. Together, we are bringing back the theatrical homes we love. Please, if you're able, give generously to the GoFundMe site below. And thank you. I am forever grateful to New York. I think the York Theater is probably the premium off-Broadway theater company in New York. When I see a show at New York, there's something special about the experience. We never could have done it without you, and the York Theater has been very important, I know, in my life and the lives of so many people in New York City. The York is unique. No other organization does exactly what the York does. You see, musical theater writers really need a home, a place where they can try stuff out, work on stuff. And the York Theater has always been that home. And the York would always be there, generously providing us with a reading, with an audience, with feedback and support. I cherish my relationship with these people. For me, the York is a very important theater in New York. If we cannot save the York Theater, um, then New York City just isn't worth, you know, living in. To put it really bluntly, the York Theater is a New York City treasure. Artistic director Jim Morgan knows the musical theater canon and is not afraid to take risks. I think we should all maybe try to help them get back on their feet. The York Theater is so spectacular that legendary writers have been writing about it for years, like Comden and Green and Bernstein. The York, the York! The York Theater is an off-Broadway institution and has been a real friend to my work over the years. Thank you to Jim and the York for enter laughing, but an even bigger thank you for the unique opportunity which their musicals and Mufti program gave me to take a fresh look at a show of my own. Uh, I cannot wait to see all the incredible young writers that they are going to continue to foster. And a big shout out to the York Theatre Company. Uh, they've been an artistic home for two generations of Greens. Of course, my father, Adolph Green and Betty Condon. God bless the York Theatre. And God bless all the people who help it to survive. They are so nurturing of the theater community. Uh, a little 
theater organization down in the basement of a church making theater on the highest level. Here's hoping wherever you wind up post deluge, your great work will continue for at least another half century. The York has a coveted place on our walls and in my heart. I hear that the York is still underwater, so to speak, and we gotta get that sucker afloat. I happen to like the York. Without places like the York, the only thing that we would have to go see on Broadway is, uh, is, is you know, garbage uh, corporate stuff. And who wants to see that? It, I'm, well, I mean, a lot of people wanna see that, but we don't. Thank you, York Theater, for all you've done for us writers. Now it's our turn to return the love and support. Out of little, much. And because uh, that's what York stands for to be. They've allowed me and my collaborators the opportunity to revisit, revise, and improve our work along the way. Uh, Broadway's big business, and New York is a gigantic international city, but New York makes us a small town and a community. An unpretentious place where you can go and attempt to discover some theatrical magic. And the York Theater is my home away from home. There's nothing else like it in New York. It is the champion of uh, the great historic uh, archives of musical theater. They have been champions of theatrical projects, musicals. While I know the flood they've experienced has been devastating, as the song says, the sun will come out tomorrow. York Theater is, quite simply, one of the most important assets we have for the continued health and growth of the American musical theater. The York, the York, if you can. The lights come up on Abby's swank New York penthouse apartment, and everyone is drinking martinis. Where's the life of the party? Where's the toast of the town? Soon she'll make her big entrance in a fabulous gown. We don't know how to handle our drab and dreary lives. Until the life of the party arrives. Abby enters at the top of the staircase. The audience applauds wildly, even though she hasn't done anything yet. Abby! Life full of glamour and sparkle and zest. Take my advice and live. Hey, Abby! Start blowing your bugle and don't be depressed. Abby! Take my advice and hey, look, there's Abby! Watch me strut, cause I'm an old pro. I'm a triple threat and I'm the star of the show. So while she's got it to give, take her advice and live. Start crashing the cymbals and beating the band. will come and I'll get carried away. So while well, she's got it to give, take her advice and live. Life's a star vehicle, and most poor suckers are in a bus and truck. Live. Do 
Amy Fay. I have a cold in my nose, a crick in my neck, and ribbons down my back, and I can't pay my rent. What'll I do now? Wow! I want you to meet my nephew, William. <coughs> my, what a lovely couple you make. See? It only takes a moment. Now, I'm going to rejoin the human race, if you'll have me. She acknowledges her exit applause. Bye, what lovely knickers you're wearing. And Abby says I can have long pants on my 40th birthday. Oh boy, June, you make me wanna. Wanna? You make me wanna sing a show to <laughs> The kind that used to be all the rage. <laughs> a good old hummable, liftable show to there's no reason for the rhyming, cause we're only marking time until the star gets back on stage. Does this mean you want to pay my rent for me? Gosh, I'd love to, but my allowance is only 10 cents a week. Don't you have a job? No, I just mix martinis for Aunt Abby. Come on, admit it, we all love a show too. Advancing. What's the one? At least we're dancing to, to a, a show, show too from all Broadway. Don't worry, I'm back and with a stunning new blouse. The landlord enters. Well, hello there, Mr. Jitters. You're looking well, Abby. I can tell you, Abby. Well, you know what I always say. Life could be so sensational if we'd all just put on a little more mascara. Mascara? Huh. Wait a minute. You're the tenant who's behind in her rent. You must pay the rent. <laughs> Abby! <laughs> what kind of party is this? Where are the hors d'oeuvres? Where's the boy with the bagel? She steps into a personal haze. Did I put out enough? Did I give all I could? We had caviar and blinis, crudités and fried zucchinis, and those little cocktail weenies, those are good. Quick, break out the champagne. Take the time to smell the roses. Live it up and from your noses before life goes down the drain. Yes, it's more than enough when you just entertain. Mr. Jitters enters in full drag with a big red gown and a huge feathered headdress. Jumping Jehovah, you're just one of the girls. I am what I am. I took your advice, put a little uh, mascara on. Oh, I feel so good. I just want to spread it around. The rent is free. In that case, I'll pay the rent. Thank you, Abby. Just 
perfect the SRO from A to Z. Well, it must be great to be so right here where we can see you. Oh, Abby, dear Abby, don't ever go away. Well, my work here is done. Mwah. So long, dearies. Abby leaves upon the happiness express. Oh, please don't go. Abby, don't you know? Abby, we'll fall apart if you go away. We don't have a shred of pride ourselves. When you're gone, we're just beside ourselves. We could never fill the bill ourselves. If you go, we'll have to kill ourselves. Abby enters after her 40th and final costume change. audience, led by gay men, rises to their feet. Abby, 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 The York Theatre Company is one of the true hidden gems of New York City. It's even more hidden when it's under muddy water. With your help, they can rise again and continue bringing intimate musical theatre to the masses and the rest of us as well. If you are able to, please consider making a donation. Hi, I'm Gail Brewer, Manhattan Borough President, powerhouse Broadway producer Tom Dangora and his colleagues who during this pandemic have supported efforts that assist the men and women who make up our beloved Broadway and its restaurants and its venues are now joining together for a fundraiser called The Musical to Save the York Theatre Company. This 50-year-old company is known for its musical and it is a New York gem. As an elected official for many years, I have allocated funding, your funding, your public funding, to the York Theatre, and I'm doing so personally tonight. Thank you to everyone who is making this event a success for the York Theatre and for New York City's recovery. Thank you. There are a number of people without whom none of us would be here tonight to celebrate the musical of musicals because the show would not exist. Beginning, of course, with the incredible creators of the show, Eric Rockwell and Joanne Bogart, and we owe them such a debt of gratitude for their talent, their brilliance, their wonderful sense of humor, and the joy that they brought to the whole process, process of putting the whole thing together originally. They were also in the cast, and in the cast is someone who also played a seminal part in it happening, Craig Foles, who brought me the script originally after he had done one reading of it and said, I thought you might be interested in this, and I was. The board of the York Theatre Company scraped together the money for the original production and, um, what can I say, under the direction of our chairman of the board, David McCoy, the show happened and was a wonderful success. But there's one person I'm singling out tonight to thank. Sadly, she passed away a year and a half ago, but you could not ask for a better friend to a production or a better producer for a production, Melanie Herman, who saw the show at the York and fell in love with it and decided it needed a longer run and gave it a longer run. She moved it across town to New World Stages, which was Dodger Stages then, and it played for a year and a half there and then played at theaters around the country. For two or three years, it was the most produced show in the Samuel French catalog. And she went to many of the productions and brought the original team along with her to make it happen because she thought we did it better than anyone. None of us would be here tonight without Melanie having been the spark plug of the original production and we are eternally grateful to her. Thank you, Melanie. I know you're looking down on us with great pride and joy as you see all of us celebrating the show that you did so much to create. Thank you and a great big hug from all of us. 
Here are a few fun facts you might not know about the York Theatre. In their 50 plus years on the main stage, the York has featured the works of over 230 writers. Over a hundred directors and musical directors. Well over a thousand actors. And 23 puppets. That's right. Avenue Q had its first developmental reading at the York Theater in 2000. I wasn't even born yet. The York Theater was originally called the York Players and they presented, well, plays. Which is interesting because its founder, Janet Hayes Walker, was actually a well-known musical theater actress with seven Broadway credits. She was even Barbara Cook's understudy in The Music Man. The York Players' first production was An Evening of Satire, written by Philip Burton, Richard Burton's foster father. The York didn't present their first musical until 1975. It was Bach and Harnix, She Loves Me. After that huge success, the company began to focus its programming on musicals. The first commercial transfer of the York Theater was in 1984, with the York's triumphant production of Sondheim's Pacific Overtures, and in its first New York City revival, it moved to the Promenade Theater. That theater is now a design within reach. Five years after the success of Pacific Overtures, the York presented the first New York revival of Sweeney Todd. That production was a smash hit, transferred and became the York's Broadway debut. Reviewers and audience members were enthusiastic about the intimacy of the York's interpretation of the Sondheim masterpiece. It was so intimate the Forbidden Broadway dubbed it Teeny Todd. Speaking of Sondheim, did you know that Jane Krakowski got her first professional job right here at the York? It was a little night music, and while I was a student in middle school by day, I was playing Frederica at the York Theater Company by night. Thank you, York Theater Company, for giving me such an exciting opportunity at such a young age. Speaking of young performers, I did a tap dance on the York stage after seeing Cagney at six years old. Here's a clip. <laughs> George Abbott, the legendary playwright, director, and producer, directed his final production at the York. It was the 1989 show, Frankie. A musical based Frankenstein. I saw it. I loved it, but my son sitting next to me punched me in the stomach and said, why'd you take me to see this? And he was 102 years old when he directed that production. And he lived for another five years after that. And the first production of the York Theater at their current home was in 1993 at St. Peter's Theater on 54th Street. And the production was Carnival which I did in high school. That's a fun fact about me. Carnival was also the York's first big win, the Outer Critics Circle Award for Best Revival. The York's first cast recording was yet again another Sondheim masterpiece, the 1995 revival of Merrily We Roll Along. Since then, the York has produced 45 cast recordings. My favorites are My Vaudeville Man, The It Girl with Miss Christian Chenoweth, Closer Than Ever. If you'd like to buy any of these recordings, they'll be available in the York lobby once we've rebuilt it. Inter Laughing, Jolson and Company, a Lucky Stiff, Mary Harry. Many of the recordings are also available for your streaming pleasure. Prodigal, Little by Little, uh, Desperate Measures, Asylum. We're moving on, Ian. Speaking of great musicals, uh, remember Florence Foster Jenkins? The New York Socialite slash Tone Deaf Soprano? That's the one. Fun fact. The York's production of Souvenir, which was about Florence's relationship with her long-suffering accompanist, Cosme McMoon, starring me, <laughs> transferred to Broadway in 2004. But wasn't it originally called Music Cal? You're right. It was. But wouldn't you know, that was the same season the musical of musicals, the musical, transferred to New World Stages. Well, having two New York productions, 
the musical of musicals the musical and music hal seemed like a pretty quick way to confuse audience members so before it even opened music hal became souvenir fun fact in their 50 plus years the york theaters had nine commercial transfers they've done 35 world premieres and let's not forget those 550 developmental readings 550 readings and let's not forget the 118 musicals in Mufti celebrating gems from the past. 550 readings. That's a lot of readings. We're moving on, Matthew. And tonight marks their first virtual production. And a final fun fact. By donating to the York Theater, you will be an integral part of the future of musical theater. So thank you for donating and celebrating the York Theater Company. We couldn't continue without you. Thank 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 you, York Theater. You're a treasure. Aspects of Junita in the style of Andrew Lloyd Webber. Come see the spectacle, come see the show. A girl with ambition, how far will she go? Her story's original, but is it by chance a really useful production? Or the old song and dance? Junita, Junita. You must pay. What you've come to, you're all washed up and sung through. The landlord is revealed as none other than Sir Phantom Jitter, mysterious opera impresario dressed in a cape and mask. I want you to sing for me. The voice of an angel. Oh, me? A whiny, self absorbed angel. But I can't pay my rent. I'll forgo your rent if you will sing something I wrote myself. You wrote it yourself? You know what? No. Yes, I wrote it myself. Sing a song that's beautiful and new. A song by me that I wrote for you. I swear it's true. So sing a song with a brand new melody. And brand new harmony that I made up myself in early 1987. 
It might sound just a teeny, like something by Puccini, but no, it's all brand new. In fact, so new that who would sue? It's just a case of deja vu. It's new. It's new. All I know is rock opera. I'm not quite up to par. This is only mock opera. You shall be my star. No, I won't. I will never sing for the middle classes. My father was middle class, and I hated him, and he hated me. I only like the lower classes and the upper classes. Screw the middle class and their so-called morality. The chorus enters on roller skates. Go, 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 to meet a goal. Run, 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 to meet a goal. Angelical Junita, tired and spent. Angelical Junita can't pay her rent. Go, 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 to meet a goal. Run, 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 to meet a run. The landlord made an offer, she turned it down. Angelical Janita has a jellical frown. Go, 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 Janita, go, Janita, go, Janita, go. The set changes to her boyfriend Bill's apartment. The audience applauds the set chain. Bill, I'm in trouble. Now what? I can't pay my rent. I need your help. You need her. I'm confused about our relationship. Me too. I'm tired of having to sing everything. Can't we just talk? <sighs> This wretched recessity. What? Forget it. Behind the eight ball in seventh heaven, dressed to the nines with five o'clock shadow. I don't understand a thing you say. We never talk anymore. First come, first served. Playing second fiddle. Getting the third degree. What's it all for? I, I don't, don't understand the thing you say. We never, never talk, talk anymore. anymore. We never talk. 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 We, we don't understand the thing you say. We never, we never talk, talk anymore. anymore. Junita, I need time to think. You should try to solve your own problems. Pay your own rent. <laughs> Junita runs out and talks to herself. Just another nutcase in another hall. It's so unfair that I should have to pay my rent like everybody else. Don't they know who I am? A sense, a sense of entitlement, sense of entitlement. Junita has a very strong sense of entitlement. She doesn't have a debt, she doesn't have a wit. It's my reputation, though she's really a tweet. Plenty of people around still adore me. I can make the landlord pay my rent for me. 
scene change. The audience applauds out of habit. Can you help me? Come in, my dear. I've been waiting for you. You shall be my But star. But won't you be a star? Then you must pay your rent. I want to be a superstar. Oh, like the great Jesus Christ. I'll do for you what I did for him. First we'll record the album, then come up with a live show. You shall be my star. Did someone say a star? Abigail von Starr enters from the top of a staircase. Who's that? Phantom Jitter, tell her who I am. Madame is the greatest star who ever lived. Oh, Miss Star, I want to be like you. Can I make a comeback? Tell me what to do. Well, you might. Need a drink or a pill now. Still, the standing ovation won't stop. And who cares if you're over the hill now? As long as you're over the top, your career will take off like a nova, and you'll never be stuck. And a flop, do the same old shtick over and over. As long as it's over the top, be more self-indulgent than you ever thought you could. Keep it loud and add more reverb. People think it's good. And your name will stay over the title as long as you are over the top. I followed you here. You can't disappear. I won't let you fall for his seduction. You're nothing but trash. I can give up a nurse, 'cause everything I do's a big production. Junita, is this true? He says he can make me a star. Don't you know you already are? Junita, we have to talk. Yes, talk. I've come to tell you, I'll pay the rent. You shall be my new star. Stand back, my Junita. Watch out for that chandelier. It's falling down, and you'll be hit. You think I'd fall for that old bit? Well. Abigail enters holding wire clippers. There's only room for one left diva in this town. 
<laughs> Look what you've done, fiend. Who are you? He pulls off the mask in anger, revealing Phantom Jitter's hideous face. <laughs> My God, you're a cat! A cat of many colors! I was born like this, deformed and scarred. My life has been very hard. Friskies in the morning, hairball after lunch. Dogs chasing after me. But now all I do is sleep all day, because I was neutered at the age of three. I'm sorry, Junita. That was the spectacle, that was the show. Junita is dead now, so what do you know? Janita, not quite dead yet, manages to sing her dying farewell. Did I have genius? Never. Did I have greatness? But was I a commercial success? Yes! Now and forever! The audience applauds the smoke machine. I hope you're enjoying tonight's presentation. If you'd like to donate, you can do so using the link below. Thank you for supporting small venues. Because of your generosity, the York will be able to continue to develop and produce new musicals for years to come. Thank you all for tuning into this special presentation of Musical of Musicals to benefit the York Theatre Company. Uh, I'd, I'd like to take an opportunity to um, talk about one of the musical's original stars, my dear friend, the late Lavette George, who played the ingenue. She was a brilliant actress and singer. Her voice could be the, the, the brightest, shimmeriest soprano one minute, and then two measures later, slide into the sassiest, brassiest belt you ever heard. She was a brilliant comedic actress, with, with razor sharp wit and impeccable timing. I can recall about maybe five to six times in my entire theater going life where I actually fell out of a chair laughing at someone's performance and Lavette's performance as the ingenue in Musical of Musicals was one of those times. It was a virtuosic, joyous, hilarious, and gorgeously sung performance. She was an absolute light. And uh, not only was she a light on the stage, where she, she did many, many, many shows throughout her career. Uh, Uptown It's Hot, Carousel, she was in Dreamgirls, she did uh, Starlight Express, Marie Christine, A New Brain. <laughs> but she was light off stage as well. All 100 pounds of her, she was so tiny. She changed the temperature of every room she walked into. And I know people say that about a lot of people, but I can attest to the fact that anyone who knew her would testify in a court of law that this was the absolute truth. Everyone loved her. I loved her deeply. She was my best friend. We met during Carousel, where she was not only um, my understudy, but she also played my oldest child in the second act, even though she was 10 years older than I am. Uh, it didn't matter. She was eternally young and beautiful, and I always looked older than she did. It didn't matter. She radiated joy wherever she went. She was the friend that you spoke to at least three times a day uh, and uh, would talk to for about four or five hours that night till four o'clock in the morning, just about nothing and everything. 
She had an infectious giggle. She was beautiful and kind and brilliant and loving. She was a Pied Piper and auntie to all of her friends' children, including mine. She, she baked my daughter Zoe's first birthday cake. <laughs> and the impression and love that she left on my daughter Zoe was so vivid and meant so much to Zoe that some 15 years since her death, just this past month, my daughter Zoe wrote a song about Lavette. And Zoe isn't the only person that I know that has written a song about her. She inspired such joy and love. She was so aptly named. She was truly love personified. And the world is, uh, has been a dimmer place since her death 15 years ago. I know I still reach for the phone to call her, to tell her things. She loved life so much. She loved her friends and her family fiercely and loyally. And she loved, loved the theater. And I think the theater is a dimmer place because her joy is no longer in it. But the joy that she left it will radiate forever. I love you, Lavette. I miss you so very much. We all do. But thank you for the joy you gave us. Hi. Hi. I'm Joel Gray. I'm Bernadette Peterson. And we are friends for over... <laughs> Long time. 50 years or more. That's correct. We met in George M. at the Palace Theater on Broadway. Yes, we did. I was George M. Cohan. And I was Josie Cohan, his sister. That's right. And we've remained brother and sister ever since. Yes, we have. We have a little song for you we'd like to dedicate to the York Theater. Give my regards to Broadway. Remember me to Herald Square. Tell all the gang at 42nd Street. I will still, we will still be there. We will. Whisper of how I'm yearning to mingle with the old time throng. Give, Give my, my regards, regards to old Broadway and say that I'll be there. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Speak easy in the style of candor and ebb. Lights up in a cabaret in Chicago in the 30s. Ha, prohibition. Speak easy. Yes, I love you. 
the smoky and the uh, kind of kinky. It might be all dokey and just a It's hard to say. Here at the speakeasy, we speak many different languages, but Pig Latin is our favorite. To fool the police, yeah. Sprague the oitje day. Parlez-vous français, eh? Et tu brute? Oh, <laughs> that one really was Latin. Yeah, that was Latin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ooh, bring on the slutty girls. Hola, aloha, hello. Life is like a little show. Bye bye, adia, adia. Life is like a weird review. You might snort a little coke or sip a little sake with a spoon of kabuki, eating soup and sukiyaki at the speakeasy. It's hard to say. So, life is good. Forget it. In here, life is disappointing. You cannot pay the rent. Like one of our own speakeasy girls, Goonie. Red stringy with the chain, not gunny with the goat, with the chain, goes jump, not gunny with the chain, not gunny with the goat, with the chain, with the chain, goes jump. Who is it? The landlord. <gasps> the landlord? Pay the rent. I can't, bye bye. Goonie, pay the rent. Red stringy with the chain, Junie goes to visit her boyfriend, Vili, in a prison full of singing and dancing inmates. Oh, Vili, I'm in real fix. It seems I can't pay my rent. Oh, Vili, I need your help. I'm no help to you. I've changed here in jail. Leave me here with my fantasies and my coloring books. See the guard by the door, color him blue. See the girl who's so mad, color her red. See the guy with the gray hat and coat, color him, you know, gray. See the boyfriend who won't pay the rent. Color me gay. <gasps> gay? But we're lovers. Yeah, well, things are different now. Go back to the speakeasy. If you can make it there, you'll make it anywhere. Bye, Looney. That's Junie with a chain. That's Looney. Forget it. Ladies and gentlemen, spider men and spider women, what happens to girls who do not pay the rent? Drip. Squeak. Minnelli. Screwed. Drip. Squeak. Minnelli. Screwed. I never paid, I never pay no rent. I never pay no, no, not one red cent. Too bad I stiffed him. It might have missed him, but I just don't pay. So I'm trying to sleep in my apartment, and all I hear is drip, drip, drip. That faucet's been dripping since the day I moved in. So I tell the landlord, I ain't paying no rent till you fix that drip. I used to have this girlfriend known as L.C., with whom I shared four sordid rooms in the Flatiron District. Well, there was this one floorboard that used to squeak, and I told that landlord, if I hear one more squeak. I haven't gotten any sleep in days. I can't take it. These gay guys who live upstairs at my house, it's all like, can we talk? It's ridiculous. I mean, it's talking, I mean, cabaret and New York, New York, and the rake, no more.
Minnelli. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. I never paid, I never paid no rent. I never paid that money's all to spend. Keep my deposits, clean out my closet, but I just don't pay. The landlord. The landlord? Oh, darling, I can't pay the rent. I don't have a muck, a yen, a buck, or a pound. I'm screwed. You're screwed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I never paid, I never paid no rent. I never paid, I ain't no resident. They might harass you. They'll never hang you if you just... Meine Damen und Herren, the speakeasy is proud to present Schloni. Once journey with a J, not Schloni with a small, because journey with a J goes down, not Schloni. The rent is due. I can't pay. Ladies and Germans, who can tell her what to do? Direct from Munich, Fraulein Abby, what would you do? Sell your body. Don't complain. Slip em a Mickey's and throw em a quickie. Auf Wiedersehen. Take it from me. It's a walk in the park. Find yourself an easy mark. Legal men will pay your price. When your heart they spot it, it's very special merchandise. You sell it, you still got it. Yeah, when we first moved to Chicago, we were so poor. My husband sent me out to sell myself on the street. I was gone for two hours. When I came back, he said, how much money did you make? I said, $50 and 10 cents. He said, 10 cents? Who gave you the 10 cents? And I said, they all did. Why go hungry, thin and pale? Whisper a coy line, then move over, Fräulein, you made a sale. No one's a saint. Who are you, Joan of Arc? Find yourself an easy Thank you, Fraulein Abby. That was so helpful. You want to know something? I always wanted to pay my rent, but I never could. I had me a world full of no. But now, I'm going to get me a world full of maybe. This time. And we all got fun. Sorrows drowned. The world is a dark and evil place that keeps spinning round and round. So, so you, you think, think you want to go with your boat to the club, hotty totty for a drink, for some kisses and hugs? No, you'll end up in a dive where your boyfriend is queer for some Nazi and you'll all get addicted to drugs. Suppose you're at a dance, there's a chance that you might win some money with some fun and romance and you'll miss. You're really a dump in the depths of a really bad depression and the marathon is fixed. Desperation. I'll pay the rent like this. 
Take my body and use it in a perfectly marvelous way. I'm not interested. You are a dirty girl. Take my body, please. It's clearly been taken already, many times, yeah? <laughs> Wait, I'll pay the rent. Take my body. Yeah, it's good. The rent is paid. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to this special event in support of the York Theatre Company. You know, I am a big fan of live theatre, not only for the escape it provides, but because it feeds the human spirit and mind, and it plays an essential role in our society and our democracy. After all, art is not a luxury, it is a necessity. And as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic, I think it will be even more important that we have a vital arts sector to entertain and enlighten us. For over 50 years, the York has been a preeminent off-Broadway destination for the development of new musicals and the celebration of beloved but forgotten classics. I have faith that Broadway will be back, but I also want to make sure we're doing everything we can as a community and a country to support smaller nonprofit venues and companies like the York, which so enrich our cultural landscape. You know, I've long believed it takes a village and tonight is proof of what is possible when we come together to support each other. So thank you, thank you again for your generous support of the York Theater Company we need it to continue to produce new and exciting musicals for years to come. And oh, do I look forward to when we can all be together again, laughing, crying, and clapping at the theater and at the York. Until then, stay well, keep faith, and be safe while we save the York. Thank you all very much. Done. Now the show is over, so run. Screaming for the exit, we're done. Not a moment too soon. It's over, done. For theater cognoscenti, done. So we can pay the renty fun. But now it's done. You walk into a show and hope you don't fall asleep watching the plot. You walk into a show and find you're watching the same plot a lot. So many points of view, though. Could they write a new show? Probably not. It's all been done. Done. Now, now the show is over, so run. run. Screaming for the exit, we're done. Not a moment too soon. It's over, done. Step, step, step. step. Hot mission T done. So you Show can pay the rent T done. The song. But in. now it's done. done. A box, six, seven, eight, done. done. Nothing, Nothing else to say, so we're, we're done. done. Yet we, we keep, keep on singing, singing. we're done. 
like you don't understand.